All right, full screen here. Going to be a video on exponentials and logs and really trying to highlight uh, the role the differentials play in the construction of those uh, calculations. Um, so let's have at it. There's four types of graphs that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at exponential decay, exponential growth. Their counterparts, their inverse calculations, inverse of growth, in, I'm sorry, inverse of decay and inverse of growth. Now, how do you construct inverse functions? You change the X's and the Y's. So an uh, asymptote of Y equals is going to become an X equals asymptote. All right, and we'll get into that with some actual calculations a little later in this video. But as I say, I want to highlight the differentials. So there's a differential here, our first on the left and the second one on the right. And it's the ratio of those differentials that form the base of your exponential models. That ratio, size to size comparison. And there's an infinite number of ways of writing these calculations, but you need two differentials, you need two coordinates and an asymptote. And our goal is to, with a couple of days of practice, be able to write all of those equations in 10 seconds or less. The logs, so on and so forth. So uh, visual of changing, let's see, I want to get you growth. So here's exponential growth, all right, function of x. And if I change the x's and the y's, that's what you see. This function has vertical differentials, okay? And I'm going to do differentials from left to right, which means the x value for this location is a smaller x value than that one. Right, one, two, three, four, right? So what's on the left for X is smaller than what's on the right. And if I'm looking vertically, what's smaller on the Y axis, like a number one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. So that smaller differential is on the lower side of the vertical ruler. Okay, so there's your inverse of, there's your exponential growth and it's inverse and now I'll give you exponential decay. There's exponential decay, and there's its inverse. So keep that in mind, and we've started a conversation now. All right, so let's actually get into some, um, some actual calculations, made up calculations. And I decided to show, I started this video earlier, but I ran out of battery. So I got a couple of different colors here. Uh, no meaning behind that, other than I couldn't find the first marker I was using. So here we have exponential decay. And I picked Newton's law of cooling because I thought it was, you know, something that I could put up pretty quickly and easily. Um, so the room temperature is 60 degrees, five minutes from now. I'm going to pour a cup of coffee. It's 140 degrees, the temperature. And in 12 minutes, that temperature is going to go down to 100, and it's cooling to the room temperature. So just a kind of a believable physical situation. Okay, so y equals 60. Horizontal asymptote. Then over here, x equals 60 becomes the vertical asymptote. I'm switching the x's and the y's. We are going from time to temperature. Over here, we're going to go from temperature to time. And I hope you see that every temperature to the right of 60 is a, going to be a bigger temperature. These are x equals values, so, so on and so forth. Now, my first differential is 80 on the left, which means on the right, it's my lower y value. And 60 plus 80 gets me 140 degrees. My next differential is 40. That's a smaller differential. But 40 to the right of 60 is 100 degrees. Uh, I can't see that too well. Maybe that's better. 100 degrees. Okay, so how do I build this exponential model? I write y equals 60. I'll even put the degree symbols in there so that we can see the units actually cancel. I think it's probably wise to do that at this stage. 
I'm adding 80 degrees. And then uh, my second differential is not 80 degrees worth of change. It's 40 degrees. Now, how many times, what is the ratio of 40 degrees to 80 degrees? It's a generic one half. Right, the degrees cancel as well, symbolically. A degree fits into a degree one time. Okay, so we'll consider that changing units right there. I went from a degrees to just the number one half. Now let's do uh, the other side as we do that. Let's do the same thing over here. So what was important over here was 60 degrees. So where can I show this? I'll show it right here. Turns out that X minus 60 degrees is going to be part of that calculation. Next, I did what? I added 80. Well, that 80 degrees is going to show up right here. We have an exponential model. Oh, T. Let's do it in terms of time. Let's use T. And let's change the Y to F of T. Uh, just doesn't hurt to do that right now. So over here, I have, um, I can erase this now, I have the inverse, right? And that's actually going to be, my X value is actually going to be a temperature. So why don't I write temperature in here? And that X value is now temperature. Well, I did T though. I got to go back to X. I'm not going to do the video again. So let's stay in terms of X and just represent X as time. The input here is time, whereas the input here is temperature. So I guess I could just gonna write X. If I left enough room there. All righty. Uh, so what's the important temperature over here? Five, I'm reading left to right. And if I subtract five, I have created one half to the zero, which we've worked with enough to know that that's one. And one times 80 is 80 plus 60 is 140. So it works for that. And then we can see the elapsed time is 12 minutes. So this is minutes. Five is a minute. That's in minutes. And X is in minutes. And we'll come back to this in a second to see how we can turn minutes into temperature. But right now, the inverse of exponentiating, we're trying to learn is logging. And so what is the base? Well, the base is second differential divided by first, which is one half. Over here, what's the base? 40 degrees divided by 80 degrees. Again, one half. I'm exponentiating. I'm logging. And now I've got to create numbers that work for 60. 60 minus 60, zero. Logarithms have to have a positive argument. Right. So therefore, it's not part of the graph, but it certainly is what we measure from. And remember, the significance of that was the room temperature. All right, so I put 60 in, it's undefined. Then I drop in the first uh, X value over here, 5140, so I drop 140. 140 minus 60 is 80 degrees, divided by 80 degrees is one. So now I have created log base one half of one. So what's the exponent I put on top of one half to get a one? That's a zero. A zero times anything is zero. So I guess I can write my answer 140. I'm sorry, uh, five. All right, because that's zero. And when I drop in uh, 140, I got to get a five and I get the marker, so I write it. I'll be doing this slightly differently um, once we get up to speed here uh, so that it'll be easier to see how to construct these from left to right than the way I'm currently doing it. All right, so let's see if we can get it to work for the other coordinate. It should work here. When I drop in 17, we should see how it works. 17 minus five, 12 minutes, 12 minutes divided by 12 minutes because this is minutes. Well, 12 minutes divided by 12 minutes is the number one. One half to the one is one half times 80 is 40 plus 60, bingo. I got a quick and easy way to write exponential functions. 
So now what happens? Well, we come back over here and we say, well, X values. I got to use 100. I got to use the number 100 degrees as my second X value. Now let's do 100 degrees. 100 degrees minus 60 degrees, 40 degrees, divided by 80 degrees. Well, there's the half. There's my base again. And we can see the base from the in, from the differentials. Right? And so now I've got to get from 5 to 100. So I guess i got to add 12. And I think I've just written the inverse. Now let's actually do the inverse here. Let's do the inverse here from the standpoint of just working with the numbers. We switch the x's and the y's, so we're looking for that function. My answers here are my inputs here, so I'll just write this. What's the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to get rid of 60. I'm going to divide by 80. I'm going to do the inverse of 1 half to the, which is log 1 half. Multiplication by 12. Addition of 5. All right, let's try another one now. Maybe I can speed up the calculation, not talk so much. All right, I've got an exponential model here, a second derivative, a second differential, a first differential. I'm going to erase those. Give you a chance to pause the video and see if you can write this quickly. And then let's see if we can uh, put in the information here over there so that it visually looks right. Uh, you pause the video, I'm just going to do it. So y equals 5 plus 15. Next time it's not 15. 5 to 35 is 30. x minus 1900 with an elapsed time of 1900 to 2025, 20, 125 years. All right, so what do I see? I see an asymptote of 5. So I'm going to write x equals 5. I can see 15 is my first differential. I'm going to move 15 units to the right. That takes me to 20. Okay, and then I'm going to move 30 units to the right, which is twice that. That, that appears to be about twice that. That's 30. Uh, there's lots to learn here. I think that's going to be half of 15. I think that's going to be 15 divided by 2. And I think the next one up here is going to be 60. Hmm. And I think you can start to see the trajectory. Well, what's the equation? Well, what's the inverse of 1900 to 20? 20 to 1900, that's a year. All right, there were always five sheep in Gill. Farmer John came, increased the population in 1900 to 20 sheep. And then his, his, you know, his great grandson or somebody, now it's got the sheep population in Gill of 35. That was a dumb analogy. That's all right. So 20 gets you 1,900, and over here, 5 plus 30 is 35. And that should get me uh, 2025 this year. All right, so how do I write that? I'll write that. I guess I can get rid of this now. So I'm going to show you how I write these. I'm writing y equals, so I take the first y I see, 1,900, and I ask how do I get to 2025. I add 125. I know it's a logger. I know x5 is the asymptote, so x minus 5. And I know how I get from 5 to 20. I go up 15. And I know how I get from 5 to 30. I go up 35. So 35 minus 5 is 30 over 15, obviously a base 2 log. And I think we're writing exponentials and logs quickly. All right, so let's actually try one more here. No, nope, I'm done with that. You try this one. Have a go at this. Very important we get up to speed here. Can you even see that? Barely. Kind of dark. That's all right. Have a go. I'm going to hope that you can. So I don't have any more time to do this, and class needs to see. So you're pausing the video. I'm just going to write the equation. I see exponential growth based on zero. I'm going up one. Next time I'm not going up one, I'm going up 2.71. X minus zero over one is the mechanics for what I've written on the board. Can't be rocket science, so I'm just writing it. So you just need three or four days of practice. 
couple of couple of these every day for four days, and you'll you'll own it. Okay, so don't panic. Um, I don't think I need a lot of those symbols over here. I really don't think I need a lot of those symbols. So let's see, what can I get rid of? I don't think I need to write zero. I don't think I need to multiply something by one. I don't think I need parentheses around this. I think it's just 2.71 raised to the X. 2.71 raised to the X. Well, I tried to give you an approximation for one of the most important functions we're gonna study, and that's Y equals E to the X where E is approximately 2.71. Now we got to start a conversation about this critter. The world works with that. Yeah, a lot of those exponential functions, like two to the X, we were doing doubling. That's approximately E to the 0.7 X. Approximately, very close. Close enough for us to get a feel for this and this. Okay, so that started a conversation on something. And let's actually look at the inverse. And so I'll be handing out uh, a cheat sheet on E values, E to the 0.72, E to the 1.13, E to the 1.65, E to the negative 0.71 half, E to the negative 1.11 third, so on and so forth. So we can begin working with the calculation to get a feel for the calculation. Let's get a feel for the inverse. What's the inverse of Y equals zero? Well, that's X equals zero. What's the inverse of zero, one? Well, that's one, zero. And I better put that here. One, zero, zero, zero. Let's see, where have I seen zero before? Hmm. Oh, I think that's the x-axis. Yeah, y equals zero is the x-axis, yeah. You can think of this as, you know, you're out in the ocean. You're above water or you're below water. Okay. Keep in mind. Uh, the inverse of 1, 2.71, if that's one unit, then 2.71, um, where am I? Uh, 2.71 is about here. I'm doing the inverse, right, doing the inverse. So we'll call that 2.71. That's a little too far. Maybe there. And then I get uh, 1. That's the inverse of 1 to 2.71 is 2.71 to 1. I think I'm seeing that. I think I'm seeing that. Yeah, it's got to have a name. So I guess it's log 2.71 of X. Sort of. Hmm. I mean, this one is. But these are approximations. And we, we, we working with E, we use the notation LN where ln is called the natural log. And we don't write the base, but it's understood to be that number, E. Just like pi, 3.14, E, 2.71. All right, there's a lot more to it. 3.1415, da, 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 da. There's a lot more to 2.71. Okay, but that is the function that we will be studying going forward. And that gets us up and running. So conversations have started. For instance, if I wanted to find the ln of six, the ln of six, hmm, well, I gotta change that to E notation. Well, I know six is two times three, and I know I just said E to the 0.7 is an approximation for two, and three, E to the 1.1, and I know my rules of logarithms, that's E to the 0.7 plus, I know my, I said logarithms, I, I know my rules of exponents, which really are rules of logarithms, I'm adding those two exponents. And now I know that e to the 1.8 is approximately six. And I'm beginning to get a little feel for the calculation. All right, so that's that. That's getting us up and running. And now we'll start putting exponential growth and decay functions into uh, graphing form quickly and easily, I hope, after three or four days of practice. All right, have a good day.